Hello and welcome back to my channel. Bonsoir et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. My name is Muriel and in this video I will be looking back at my reading year. 2020 was a particular year for well, everyone, wasn't it? But it was an excellent reading year, actually, weirdly enough. I mean, my personal life has not been great at all, but somehow I managed to down, so far, 132 books. I still have a week of the year, well, I mean, 10 days of the year left, and I will at least finish two books during that time period. So in total, I will have read in 2020 134 books. My original reading goal was 70, so I almost reach that 200% mark. So this is kind of a yearly reading wrap-up. I'm obviously not going to mention or go over every single book I read because that'd be insane. But I wanted to go over a few of them, highlight the highs, the lows, the interestings, if you will. So yeah, and I'll go through category of books. First I'll talk about my non-fiction reads, then my graphical reads, and then the single novels I read and the series I read or reread. Also a quick note, I had perhaps originally intended to add like an analytical side to this video with how many books by male or female authors, but I just don't have the time to do that. I guess overall it was a fairly reasonably even split between male and female authors. I can't confirm this out of hand. Perhaps there were just a bit more books written by male authors. And well, I can definitely tell you that the majority of what I read was SFF. And more specifically, I do think I read slightly more science fiction than fantasy or horror dystopian, and I definitely read more fiction overall than non-fiction. I did read a fair chunk of graphic stuff, whether graphic fiction or non-fiction, though obviously here again I read a lot more graphic fiction, especially since I started a few, well, comic book series. So that's for my, like, analytics, if you will. Okay, so... Nonfiction wise, I read an interesting variety of titles. I think I started out the year with like a book about genetics, but then I read a couple books about animal behavior. One which really stood out to me was The Genius of Birds by Jennifer Ackerman, because obviously I'm a bird nerd, so <laughs> there's that. And I also did a video, a commemorative video to mark the death of my parrot, talking about all the books I have about birds, but you know, not reference guides, just like books about bird cognition or living with birds. So I was quite happy to make that video as well. I read Being Who I Am, a fair few books about feminism, a few classics or more modern classics I hadn't yet read, like Mary Beard's Women in Power or Laura Bates' Everyday Sexism, which was very good. I'll also mention two other great books which were like five star reads for me, which was The Gendered Brain by Gina Rippon and as well Invisible Women by Caroline Prado Perez, which is about the lack of sex specific data in a lot of different fields and what well, the problems <laughs> that pose for a more equal society and a safer society for women and girls. Those were two excellent excellent books. I highly, highly recommend them. Though on the subject of gender again, so I mentioned everyday sexism, I did read a book in French which was actually fairly good called Les Couilles sur la Table by Victoire Tuallion, which explores masculinity or the construction of masculinities and toxic masculinity and well, just male identities and how they interact with the world and of course with women etc. So that and everyday sexism I think complement each other fairly well and I would both recommend them as well provided you speak both French and English, of course. Now, I also read like a few books about abuse, psychological abuse, and trauma, and sexual trauma. The only one out of those I would really highly recommend, again, to my French-speaking fellows, would be Les violences sexuelles, 40 questions réponses by le docteur Muriel Salmona, because I thought it was very informative, very thorough, in-depth, and I did enjoy the fact she had a strong, almost radical feminist stance. I mean, that's a personal preference, obviously. That might not appeal to some people, but apart from that, though, it's still a good resource, I think. I also read a bunch of books on, like, the weird 
Nabiot's concept of intellectual giftedness and just like a couple of books on Asperger's syndrome as well, because it has to do with questionings I have about myself and my own history and my mental health. Overall, I was very disappointed with this foray into that subject because a lot of it, not the autism part, but like the intellectual giftedness part, a lot of it has just uncomfortable levels of suicide floating around it. Like the concept of intellectual giftedness is valid from like a purely numerical standpoint. Like you've got the bell curve for the distribution of IQ and that's a thing and you can measure that and there's solid studies on that and there's a cutoff point where you've got just very few people with a certain IQ either way that's valid but there's stuff around it that just also gets confused with autism spectrum disorder and so it was very frustrating for me the autism thing that I might still explore but perhaps through something a bit more lighthearted. I mean I read a good non-fiction graphic memoir about Asperger syndrome which was called La Différence Invisible I had a few quibbles with it to be fair but I would also actually recommend you check it out if you're interested by these topics. Finally, I'll mention another very good book I would recommend and two of the biggest disappointments of the year in the realm of nonfiction. So I read Freud et Lacan de Charlatan by Jack Van Rillard, which is about psychoanalysis, more specifically Frudo Lacanian psychoanalysis, which still has a lot of power and sway in France, a wee bit in Belgium, and then in Argentina for some reason. And it just basically demolishes the premise of Frudo Lacanian psychoanalysis. Again, not without its flaws, but if it's something that you think might interest you, I would highly recommend it as a good reference or starting point on that subject. And two of the biggest disappointments of the year were Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker, is that right? Again, apologies if I got that wrong, which gets a lot of hype and a lot of praise on the internet, I've noticed. But I mentioned this in the monthly wrap-up in which I mentioned this novel. Do not fall for that hype! The guy lies about his credentials, the guy lies about the research mentioned in his book. There are next to no references or sources for the tall claims he presents in his book. It was extremely bad. Do not fall for the hype. It is not a good science book. It is not even a good pop science book. Please don't buy it, honestly. And in fact, it's one of the only books I DNF'd. I did read like two thirds of it, so I felt that meant I could share my opinion about it, but really it was extremely aggravating. Do not read that book. <laughs> Of course, you're free to do whatever you want, but I would not recommend it. And then the other major disappointment was King Kong Theory by Virginie Despentes, which is kind of like a feminist essay by a fairly well-known French writer and film director. And I doubt that she really is a feminist as such. I think she's more like an anti-capitalist or anti-classist than a feminist proper. She's very praiseworthy when it comes to pornography, prostitution, and masculinity but then trashes femininity but then not what you could use femininity to lure and seduce men that essay was a mess an absolute mess of garbage again i would absolutely not recommend you read it in french or english because it has been translated then like i said i also read quite a few items of the uh, well graphic publishing shall I put it that way? Though there aren't that many that stick out to me as individual graphic novels. I already mentioned La Différence Invisible, which was a graphic memoir, which again I had some quibbles with, but overall I would still recommend it if you're curious about Asperger syndrome, especially from the point of view of a woman. But then fiction-wise, I will say and mention I read this magnificent art book by Jean-Sébastien Fosbach, which is called Shaman Les Chants de la Déesse, which is about, well, female shamans, earth-centered and female-centered spirituality and goddess spirituality through the portraits and the stories of different shamans from different parts of the world, though mostly concentrated in the Americas, a bit like the book I'd read in 2019 called A Compendium of Witches by Natasha Elinsic. I do prefer that one though because I think it's more thorough and offers more diversity in her portrayals of witches, shamans, sorceresses, etc. And then I have to mention two graphic novels which I read in November because they were just brilliant. There was La Fille dans l'écran by Manon Devaux et Lulubi. I in fact did a short review in French for it if you want to check it out. It was just so sweet 
It was a long distance lesbian love story, or at least it starts as a long distance relationship and things unfold and it was just adorable. It gave me the warm and fuzzies. I loved it. And then something I loved even more than that was Anais Nin sur la mer des mensonges, which is a partly biographical graphic novel about the life of Anais Nin, the erotica and diary writer. I mean, she didn't just write erotica, she was a writer, so the writer, but she was also, amongst other things, known for her erotic writing, and I loved her specifically for that. And she was the lover of Henry Miller and perhaps his wife June. And so that graphic novel really takes a close look at her years in Paris when she knew Henry Miller. The art style was just magnificent. It touched me on a very deep level because I found interesting, poignant parallels between Anna Eisner's story and my own in a way. There were also significant differences. <laughs> the gods. I can recommend this graphic novel high enough, to be honest. That one was like a 10 out of 10 for me, and La Fille dans l'écran was like a 9 out of 10. I would highly, highly recommend both of those. They're fairly different in tone as well and art style, but they were both great graphic novels, so if you read French, please go buy them or read them from your library, but read them and savor them, and maybe hopefully they'll be translated into English and other languages as well. But what was also interesting about 2020 is that 2020 marked my starting different comic book series in English. I wasn't really aware of what existed apart from like, you know, the Marvel and DC superhero stuff, which I don't give a single crap about, you won't. And I realized, well, there's lots out there actually. So I started four different series. I started and completed Why the Last Man, which I read, I mean, through from like January or like the end of December 2019 to the summer of this year, I think. And I really highly enjoyed it. I gave like an 8 out of 10 to this series overall. I was satisfied with the ending. It's an interesting premise. If Again, if you don't know, basically something kills off all the animals that carry a Y chromosome. So basically all the male mammals die off one day, except for like one dude and his capuchin monkey and stuff happens. <laughs> I mean, you never really get solid answers to some of the questions. You'll inevitably ask yourself about what the hell's going on. But there's a lot of humor, interesting characters, and I really liked it. The art style wasn't really my thing initially, but I kind of got over that and just got invested in the story and the characters. And I forgot to add that Why the Last Man is a Brian K. Vaughan series with different illustrators. And then I read also Monstrous by Marjorie M. Liu and Sana Takeda, which is about a hybrid human arcanic, because I mean, it's, it's a fantasy world with elements of science fiction and they're humans and then there are like half animal, half human beings and humanoid beings and then cats which talk and have a civilization. Lots of stuff going on. I absolutely love that series and I'm enjoying reading through it. It's not completed yet. The art style is gorgeous. It's absolutely ridiculously gorgeous. It kind of has an East meets West vibe which I really enjoy and inspirations from Art Deco and Art Nouveau. So yeah. Ticks all the boxes for me with strong female characters and even matriarchal structures. I would definitely recommend it if you're like a fancy fan, a science fiction fan, even a bit of a steampunk fan, and if you like elements of perhaps Japanese manga culture and just animal human hybrids and all that good stuff. I also got into the comic series Sex Criminals, which I'm just about to finish because the final volume, volume six, has actually come out this month, but I'll only be getting to it in January of next year. And this again is kind of a wacky premise. It's basically two people, a man and a woman, who realize they can freeze time when they have an orgasm. And there's a lot of sex in these comics, as the title might imply, but it kind of pokes fun at sex and the overwhelming presence of sex in our culture and our advertisement and all the sexual dynamics between human beings and in heterosexual relationships, but also in other types of relationships is a good representation of diversity in that regard, I think. And the characters are just, I don't know, you get attached to them. You get attached to them, you care about them, about what happens to them, and there's some crazy stuff in there. Yeah, some pretty scenes, but I really like it. It kind of fits into the fact that I like science fiction because there's a slight science fiction element, if you will. It also fits into my niche interest of like human sexuality and the history of erotic art and literature and things like that. So I'm gonna finish it and we'll see how it concludes. I really hope it has a satisfying conclusion, that's for sure. And finally, I got into Saga 
by Brian K. Morgan again and Laura, Fio sorry, Fiona Staples. Oh, and <laughs> forgot to mention Sex Criminals. This is by Jip Starsky and Matt Fraction. So Saga, I think everyone on Booktube, I mean, everyone on the SFS side of Booktube knows of Saga at this point. That's also kind of a just crazy what the F series that mixes elements of fantasy science fiction it takes place in space with different planets is there an earth somewhere who knows and there are almost no like straight up humans most of the humanoid characters incorporate some kind of animal element or you've got straight up robots with televisions for heads and it's insane there are different plot threads that intertwine and different characters and it's about family and about tribe and belonging and war and trauma and it's great but I mean it also goes some weird explicit places I should add this is definitely a series for adults but it's great I love it so as far as I understand it there are nine published compendiums in that series and it's not finished but there hasn't been a volume 10 in several years so I don't know I guess maybe it's like one of these stories that has a main arc and there's supposed to be a second main arc but you can just enjoy the first one so in any case I'll be finishing up the last four volumes of the nine original volumes in 2021 so now let's get on to the actual fiction novels First off, standalone novels. This year has been great for my growing collection of science fiction master exhibitions, fancy master exhibitions, and Penguin English Library editions. I'll insert a little photo of this pride and joy of mine, I guess. So yeah, I read quite a bit of classic science fiction, more so than classic fantasy, and I read some OG classics such as The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and Dracula by Bram Stoker. Now in the science fiction department, I read Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney, I read Rendezvous with Rama by Sir Arthur C. Clarke, I read Ringworld by Larry Niven, and other titles, obviously. I also added title to my collection, if you will, of feminist science fiction and fantasy. So I added a couple of novels by Sherry S. Tepper. I read Ammonite by Nicola Griffith. I read Native Tongue by Suzette Hayden Elgin. I read as well, I mean, it's not specifically feminist, but she was part of like the feminist spiritualist movement. So Unquenchable Fire by Rachel Pollard. So yeah, a good little selection of titles there. This is also the year where I got into H.P. Lovecraft, really. I mean, technically I started out with Up the Mountain's Madness at the end of 2019, but I read a first anthology of his published by Penguin Modern Classics in like January with The Call of Cthulhu and Other Weird Stories and really, really enjoyed it. It's also the year I fell in love in a way with China Mabel's work. I read Kraken and Embassy Town, and Embassy Town is straight up one of the best books I've read this year. It's like one of my only 10 out of 10s of 2020, and I of course did reviews for a lot of these novels. I'll probably post them like in the description box because uh, I won't be able to do it otherwise. Now of course it wasn't a year without its um, disappointments, shall we say. I read Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang. That was probably the biggest disappointment because I really thought I would love it and I very much did not. I wouldn't say I straight up hated it, but it wasn't good to me. I don't know why it didn't work for me, because it seems to work for the vast majority of people, but I did a rant review for it, if you want again to have a good laugh. Another title which wasn't so much a disappointment as just, well, not that good, was More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon, which, however, I still added to my collection of science fiction masterworks editions. Then taking a look, or a mental look, at my fantasy masterworks collection, I read The Forgotten Beasts of Elle by Patricia A. McClip, which I really did enjoy, so I'll definitely be reading something else by her next year. I read Mythago Wood and Lavondis by Robert Holtstock, which I also really enjoyed, especially Lavondis. I did a dual review for both of these novels. And I read The Falling Woman by Pat Murphy, which also really moved me. I guess I could technically add that the books I read by Sherry Estepper were 
grass and raising the stones, for which I also did a dual review. Now I could move on to the non SFF stuff I have read because I did read some. So I read in French my only French novel of the year, basically. La Maison by Emma Becker, which was, um, again, massive disappointment, massive fail, one of the biggest disappointments of the year, along with Stories of Your Life and others by Ted Chang. I did a rant review for it in French, however. So yeah, Emma Becker was just someone whose novels I hadn't really enjoyed beforehand. In fact, I have two of them right here, which I still enjoy, but that one was just bad. It was briefly like some kind of weird hybrid between memoir, novel, and expose on working in a brothel in Berlin. Moving on, I read Pale Fire by Vladimir Nabokov. Kind of went over my head, if I'm being honest. It's metafiction about literary criticism, I guess, in academia. It was beautifully written because it's freaking Nabokov. But beyond that, there's not really an engaging story. Now, I'll mention, it's not technically a novel, but I do want to mention it because it was important with what comes next. I did read a memoir by Vanessa Springora, which is called Le Consentement, and it's a memoir about her abusive relationship with a much, much older French author when she was 14 years old. This French author is in fact actually on trial now for pedophilia and sexual abuse. And so after that, I read My Dog Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. That was a very, very important read for me this year for a couple of different reasons, because it touched upon personal lived experience helped me to contextualize certain things and participated in more stuff that's just happening in my life and which is contributing to my issues with mental health. I'll leave it at that. Since I read that, I also took the opportunity to reread Lolita for the second time and then I reread My Dark Vanessa in October slash November and I did Two videos which I'm actually really satisfied with. A video updating my thoughts about both of these novels and a video comparing Lolita and My Dog Vanessa. I would suggest kindly that you go check them out because I'm really happy with them for once. So yeah, those were really important reads for me this year. So the... well no, that's all actually. That's all the non-speculative fiction I've read this year. Then on to some series. And within series, I'm also going to mention the major rereads of the year. Now, I did already mention in my standalone section that I reread Lolita for the second time. And, and it was a very important reread because it led to making one of my favorite videos. And it was also important for personal reasons. But so my two big series rereads of the year was my reread of The Chronicles of Pern by Anne McCaffrey, or at least my reread of the books I previously read by her. I have never and will never read the entirety of The Chronicles of Pern. I've read eight books in The Chronicles of Pern. I think I calculated that it's about like a third of them, something like that. Good enough. <laughs> but it was, it was an enjoyable experience overall, even though I realized that they haven't aged that well, let's put it that way. I definitely didn't enjoy them nearly as much as I did when I was like 12 or 13 years old. I still enjoy the dragons obviously, but I found major flaws with the world building, with cringy sexual dynamics and rape to love tropes and things of that general order. You can check out my series review for that if you'd like. But so yeah, it was interesting to revisit that series. I'll probably never reread them, but for the moment I'll keep them in my diary because it's a special part of my reading history. And again, Dragons in Space. And then I also, big major reread of this year, I reread His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. And then I followed on with La Belle Sauvage and The Secret Commonwealth. So His Dark Materials was a highly enjoyable reread. Definitely aged better than The Chronicles of Pern. But I did also realize that I didn't enjoy it as much as I did when I read them for the first time. I was like, again, about 13 years old. Found issues with the world building. I didn't think the theming was that deep overall. The whole religion, anti-religion, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and I didn't like the romance, actually, between Will and Lyra. Still me, I guess. <laughs> but still, there's something magical about those books. Again, I will definitely not be getting rid of them. I'll also add that I actually finished watching the first season of the BBC TV show adaptation and it was great so now I'm hyped for season two. The big surprise of the year is that not only did I enjoy La Belle Sauvage, I loved The Secret Commonwealth. 
which takes place like 11 years after the end of the Amber Spyglass. So Lyra's about 20 years old. She's an adult and it's a lot more complicated, but you stay inside her parallel universe and you explore it with a lot more depth and there's stuff going on with demons, etc. And I loved it. I really did not expect to love it. I was actually fairly apprehensive since a lot of people don't seem to like it. So that was probably my best surprise of 2020. It was not the best book I read, but it was the most surprisingly good book I read in 2020. Now as to new series, I did, well, I mean, I did really like a couple of duologies. So Grass and Raising the Stones is technically part of a trilogy, but I only read those two and they are technically connected, but only loosely. Mythago Wood and Levandis are also part of a series, and those two are more directly sequels of one another, I would say. So I did read like duologies. I only really read two series though, so series to me is like three and up. I did read the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I listened to it on audiobook. I mean technically I finished like rereading A Song of Ice and Fire at the very very beginning of 2020, but I'm not replying those. So Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, and I was happily surprised overall. I was expecting to not like it at all, because I'd seen some reviewers whose opinions I respect a lot say that it read almost a bit like white and it was so hyped. I mean, it is so hyped. The Cosmere is so hyped and I've learned to really distrust hype now. But actually, it was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was enjoyable. It was entertaining. It did its job, basically, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, I got some feels out of it, so there's that. So yeah, now I'm interested in reading the Stormlight Archive. So there's that as well. <laughs> of course, I did a review for like Final Empire and Mistborn as a whole, if you want to check it out. And finally, <laughs> we come to the series of 2020, or at least the second half of 2020, the Doom Chronicles, or the Doomverse, or the Doom Hexagi, I think. The official name for it is the Doom Chronicles, so I guess we'll go with that. Well, I'm not technically finished with it, because like I said, there's like 10 days of 2020 left, and I still have to read Chapter House Doom. I can still already comment on it though. The first Doom book, great. It truly really is great. It deserves its spot as a classic of science fiction. Yeah, it's up there with the greats, most definitely. I would even argue somewhat that the first Doom trilogy as a whole is great, is up there. Then I came to God Emperor of Doom, and it just went like this. <laughs> Uh, so that was horrible. You can listen to me rant about that for 35 minutes if you want, to have a good laugh. And then I finished Heretics of Dune, which was better than God Emperor, but I'm like, not that hard to do, mate. And it's just not as good as the first trilogy. It's just not there anymore. The magic, the brilliance, the shininess of it, it's just leaked out. It's gone. The spice is not flowing anymore. I don't know what the hell happened with this series. Like, it's sad. It's, it's generally sad in a weird way. I don't expect Chapter House to like, elevated that significantly. I'm expecting it to be like a 6, maybe a 6.5, a bit like Heretics. And yet you still have the first Dune trilogy, which I think was definitely great. I guess overall, individually, I would give them a 7.5 out of 10. Overall, maybe it's like just that 8, but not beyond that 8. But of course, I'll get back to rating and overall rating, etc. in my Dune Chronicles review towards the end of January. Don't worry, it will be done at some point. But that was a significant series read for 2020. I wanted to tackle the Doomverse, and I have done so. I mean, I will have done so by the time you see this video. And it was definitely an experience. A rocky, inconsistent experience. Great start and a sad, disappointing ending to it. But I'm happy I did it. I'm really happy I have those books under my belt now. I can already tell you that I'm not that interested in reading Foundation by Isaac Asimov, but I do plan on reading at least the first two books in the Hyperion Cantos by Dan Simmons next year. So in that general vein of like big science fiction epics, etc., I will be reading those two most definitely. And in the realm of series more generally, I plan on reading the Poppy Wall trilogy next year. I plan on reading the new Crobizon trilogy by China Mieville. I plan on reading the Ninth Rain trilogy. I don't think that's the trilogy's name, but the first book in that trilogy is called Ninth Rain by Jen Williams. Uh, and there was a fourth one, I think. Oh, I'm not sure, but I'll also be reading the Children of Time, Children of Ruin duology. Oh, also, 
a big one I plan on tackling next year is House of Leaves. Yes, that one. I'm a bit wary because metafiction doesn't seem to agree with me that much, but I'm just really curious about it. And I'll be reading more H.P. Lovecraft, and I plan on listening to the Stormlight Archive. I plan on continuing the Realm of the Elderlings as well, and just, yeah, a selection of SFF titles and of some titles of nonfiction. And I will be finishing Sex Criminals. I will be finishing the at least first arc of Saga. Might pick up one or two new comic book series. We'll be reading a few graphic novels here and there. So that wraps up my 2020 reading overview or reading wrap up, whichever way you want to put it. How did your reading year go? I mean, you don't have to share obviously, but uh, how did your personal year go? I mean, I hope both of them were good or not too bad at least. I hope you reached your reading goals. I hope you reached some of your other personal goals as well. I hope you will take very good care of yourselves and that you enjoy the broadly speaking winter holidays. I hope you'll have a lovely day, evening, whichever you prefer, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye bye!